Hi, my name is Mike Falmer. Let's look at the scriptures. Today, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. We're going to be looking at Joseph, the earthly father of Jesus, the husband of Mary. And we'll be reading today out of the New American Standard Bible, the 1995 edition. Let's get started. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you, will go, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin, the virgin shall be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And Joseph awoke from his sleep, and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took Mary as his wife, but kept her a virgin until she gave birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Now, starting at verse 18, the birth of Jesus Christ is the focal point of this narrative. Mary is betrothed to Joseph. Now, betrothed means that they were in the first stage of marriage within the Jewish culture, and this this state, this betrothed state, usually lasted for about a year before they consummated the marriage. Now, back in their, their day, betrothal was a little more legal than what our engagement is now. In our engagement at this point in time, if two people decide that they're not gonna be engaged anymore, they just end the engagement. Well, here, back in Jesus' day, back in Mary and Joseph's day, right when Jesus had been conceived, the betrothal had to actually be ended by a divorce. So that's why Joseph was planning on divorcing her, because as far as the Jewish mind was concerned at that day, they had taken the legal steps to be married, the being betrothed, and in order to end it, they would have to get a divorce. And so that's what Joseph was planning on doing because Mary was pregnant prior to their consummation of the marriage. So in the natural, it looked as though she had been unfaithful to Joseph. However, this was not the case because she is pregnant by the will of God and by the working of the Holy Spirit. Verse 19, Joseph, who's regarded or referred to as Mary's husband, he again, even though they're betrothed, she's still, he's still considered her husband. He's a righteous man. Now that word righteous means just, good, honorable. This reveals Joseph's character. He wanted to handle this situation correctly. He thinks Mary sinned against him. He thinks she was unfaithful. She, he thinks she had committed adultery. Now, he's a son of David. David had actually committed adultery. Joseph, being a descendant of David, thinks that he's the victim of an adulterous wife. Consequently, he plans on quietly divorcing Mary because she's pregnant and the child's not his. 
Now, he doesn't want to publicly disgrace Mary. And again, this goes back to showing that he's a righteous man. He's not vindictive. He's, he, he would have been hurt. He wouldn't have understood why, how she could have done this thing to him if she had actually been unfaithful, which we know she wasn't. But in his mindset, his thinking at the time, he thinks she's being unfaith that she had been unfaithful to him. And even though in his mind she had sinned against him, he still did not want to publicly disgrace her. He wanted to be compassionate and merciful and just put her away quietly and move on. He wanted to be like God. God is merciful to us in the midst of our sinfulness. And Joseph was showing this type of God-like mercy to Mary, even though, as he's about to find out, she hadn't sinned. Because this is the working of the Holy Spirit this is God's plan. But at this point in time, Joseph doesn't know this. So, this shows why God chose Joseph to be the earthly father of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Because Joseph was merciful. Joseph was righteous. Joseph was a good and just man. And that's why God the Father chose him for this extremely important role. Much like his father David, one could say that Joseph is a man after God's own heart. You can look up those references where the scriptures talks about David being a man after God's own heart in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14 and also Acts chapter 13, verse 22. Now, as Joseph's considering all this, putting Mary away, but doing it quietly and, and showing her mercy and compassion, he's facing the biggest decision of his life. So what does he do? He goes to sleep. While he's sleeping, God sends an angel to him in a dream. Now, the angel, who, although the angel is unnamed in Matthew's Gospel, since Gabriel is the one who appeared to Mary, as recorded in Luke's Gospel, more than likely, Gabriel is the one who appeared to Joseph in this dream. However, we don't know that for sure. That's a supposition on my part, but I'm of the persuade, of the opinion that the angel who appeared to Joseph in the dream and the subsequent dreams was the angel Gabriel. So David, or excuse me, so Joseph is addressed by the angel as Joseph, son of David. Joseph belongs to David's kingly line. The kings of Israel, or the kings of Judah, I should say, excuse me, the kings of Judah were the fathers of Joseph. Joseph wasn't just a descendant of David, he was of the royal line, the kingly line of David. That's the lineage that Joseph has. And that's the lineage that he transferred to Jesus. And that's how Jesus was the son of David and was an heir apparent and the heir to David's throne. So the angel tells Joseph to not be afraid to take Mary as his wife. She hasn't been unfaithful to him. She has not sinned against him. This pregnancy is the manifestation of God's will. This child who's conceived within Mary, is of the Holy Spirit. Since Jesus is God, and I would uh, give you two references real quick, John 1.1 1, 1 and John 8.58, clearly proclaim that Jesus is God. So since he is God, the source of his conception 
is the Holy Spirit. God prepared Jesus' body for him within the womb of Mary. You can look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, where it talks about God preparing a body for Jesus. Jesus received his humanity from God. Please remember, in John 14, 9, Jesus said to Philip, He who has seen me has seen the Father. Paul writes in Colossians 1.15, He, that is Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Likewise, in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 9, And he, Jesus, is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature. So Jesus is clearly the Son of God. Now, the angel also lets Joseph know that the baby is a boy. Well, it's a heavenly sonogram. And the angel tells Joseph to name the child Jesus. Now, Jesus means the Lord saves. This is prophetic because Jesus would not only save the Jewish people, but he would save the world from their sins. Now, verse 22, all this occurs to fulfill the words spoken by the Lord through the prophet in Isaiah 14, or I'm sorry, in Isaiah 7, 14. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. Matthew begins and ends his gospel with the message of God being with us. Here in Matthew chapter 1, he mentions that they will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And if you look at Matthew 28, 20, Jesus says, well, let's read, start at verse 18. So we'll read Matthew 28, 18 through 20, but we'll focus on what he says in verse 20. Verse 18, And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He begins the gospel saying, He is Emmanuel, God with us. He ends the gospel here with what is called the Great Commission. In verse 20, he says, I am with you always. Beginning the gospel with the message, ending the gospel with the same message. Matthew wanted to make sure that we understood that Jesus is with us and he will be with us always. So now, looking back at Matthew chapter 1, verse 24, Joseph wakes up and obeys the words of the angel. He takes Mary as his wife. And in verse 25, he does not have sexual relations with her until she gives birth to Jesus, testifying of Joseph's righteousness. He didn't want to violate the sanctity of the conception and forthcoming birth of Jesus Christ. So he did not have normal human relations, sexual relations with Mary until she had given birth to Jesus. After Jesus was born, they had normal sexual relations. The scriptures say that. But what Joseph didn't do 
was have relations with Mary prior to the birth of Jesus so that the scripture would be fulfilled that says the virgin, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son. So Mary was a virgin when she conceived Jesus. She was a virgin when she gave birth to Jesus. She kept herself pure prior to the conception of Jesus, and Joseph and her kept her pure during, the pregnancy, during her pregnancy with Jesus. They did not have sexual relations until after the birth of Jesus. So Mary was a virgin when she conceived Jesus, and she was a virgin when Mary gave birth to Jesus. We know that Mary was a virgin prior to the conception because of her conversation with the angel. Because she said to the angel in Luke chapter 1 verse 34, how can this be since I'm a virgin? So Mary was pure when the conception of Jesus occurred and even though she came to live with Joseph as husband and wife after this dream that Joseph received, she was still a virgin when she gave birth to Jesus because they were faithful to obey the will of God so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. So at the when her pregnancy became full term, she gave birth to a baby boy and Joseph named him Jesus just as the angel had commanded. Mary and Joseph obeyed the will of God and their obedience fulfilled the scriptures. Like Mary and Joseph, the Lord desires that we obey him and his word in our lives. And while we have different roles than Mary and Joseph, our obedience to the will of God is extremely important in the furtherance of the gospel in our day. My prayer for you and my prayer for me is that we will fulfill God's plan and purpose for our lives, even as Mary and Joseph fulfilled God's plan and purpose in their lives. Thanks for watching this video.